Hey guys, welcome to an impromptu unboxing video. This just arrived and I'm really anxious to see if the contents fared well and to see exactly what it is that I got. What do you think? So, I guess I will just get right to it. You've seen me do plenty of Motorola TV restorations in the past. I re recently did a pair of VT71s. In the past, I've done a few other models, Bakelite models, the 7VT2, 7VT3. There's also a 7VT5 suitcase set. And then there's uh, some 8-inch models, a 9T1, 9L1. Uh, there's one other that escapes me right now that I have that I haven't shown you guys yet. We'll get to it someday. But, there's a service manual that came out for the TS-18 chassis. That's the later chassis. On the cover of it, they show a model, a 7VT1. Well, nobody for sure has ever seen one. I've talked about it. I've talked about it with other collectors who have been in this longer than I have. And the basic conclusion was they never made it. And the service manual got printed... And the TS-18, 18A, was towards the end of the run. They were introduced in 1950. That was the tail end of the electrostatic sets. So that's what I'm talking about. The little 7 and 8 inch round electrostatic TVs. Little, little budget TVs. Well, a couple weeks ago, somebody, uh, well, Deco Joe on the Antique Radio Forum posted, Hey, there's an unusual looking... Motorola TV kind of looks like it could be a 7VT1, but it's been, uh, well, it looks a little different, so I couldn't resist. I bought it. I think I was the only bidder. <laughs> and uh, I just arrived. I asked the seller. I, I said, hey, I'll pay extra if you pack it well. He assured me he would. He says he shipped vintage items before. Well, okay. He put some foam around it, uh, but not the most impressive packing job but it's here and from what I can see at least from the top it didn't get destroyed so this is the back side side and this is the front most delicate part you put a piece of soft foam in the front all right so I'm gonna put the camera down and pull this out and then we'll really dig into it so there she is <laughs> So what is the distinguishing feature of the 7V series? They all had a round opening for the picture tube. The earlier VT71s had a rectangular opening. This plastic bezel went straight across and it was a rectangular opening with rounded corners. The 7VT series, kind of porthole looking. 7VT2 and 3 were Bakelite. 7VT5 was a Tolux covered suitcase set. But this would be, if there, if the fabled 7VT1 exists, this is it. It was a wooden cabinet with that same round bezel. <laughs> However, I assure you, none of the Motorola sets featured these fanciful decals or were painted bright red. And on the sides, well, things really get interesting. So what the heck are we looking at? For sure it's been painted. For sure it's had decals applied to it. Did a nice job with the decals, I gotta say. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> for sure, that is not original. And there's one over here as well. So if the 7 isn't the 7VT1, what the heck is it? Well, somebody could have taken a VT71 with its straight across plastic bezel and very carefully cut the opening and borrowed the front bezel from a 7VT5. Knobs um, should all be red. This looks to be the correct channel changer. Uh, these should be red. There should be a red fine tuning knob in the middle. Um, at least that's what the uh, 
the other later sets have. Uh, so I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I will look. Uh, I already know that there's no indication on the back of what model it is. There might be one underneath. Otherwise, uh, I will need to examine the cabinet and try to tell was this done at the factory or was this done aftermarket. I bet this is kind of scuffed up. It's reverse painted gold. And uh, of course, I want to see if the CRT survived. I can already tell it's dropped down quite a bit. There's not a whole lot of support in these things. Here's a look at the back. It does have the original metal back and AC interlock, but the cord is gone. I believe the seller did show this thing with the tubes lit up. I can see the ballast is present. So, TS18, serial number 309,956. I've actually been keeping track of these in a spreadsheet so I can, if I looked it up, I can approximate when it was made. Now, there was a later 18A, so this is not exactly the end of the run. Those were used in the 8-inch sets. But it's certainly a later set, that's for sure. Um, so I'm going to grab a screwdriver and pop the back off. Also, I'm going to tip it on its side and take a look underneath. So here's something else unusual. Minor, but unusual. All four screws are the same on the back. It's pretty rare to get a complete set of screws, and these are definitely an old-style screw. Usually, when the second like service, they get lost. Uh, mismatched screws are, are put in their pl uh, to replace them, so... Odd. Uh, I can see it's also got the uh, metal tray on the bottom. Which um, the other 18 series didn't need because they were sealed off on the bottom. But this cabinet, yeah, well you see it when I tip it on its side. Tons of dust. Uh, this chassis has not been out in a long time. So the CRT has definitely slipped down, but I don't think it's broken. Get a little more light going. I think that's the later style speaker too. So it certainly all points towards the innards are are later editions of everything. And that CRT gasket that's come loose sure looks like the original real deal. And if this was a modified rectangular set, where'd they get the round mask? <coughs> now I can get a peek too at the cut job on that wood. And boy, that does look like it's professionally done. And there's a nice bit of asbestos on the top of the cabinet, above the ballast, because it gets friggin' hot. Interesting. Alright, let's take a look underneath. Well, the underside certainly adds to the mystery. Huh. Okay, so, this is how the original VT-71 bottom looked. This will first member of the family started the whole series of Motorola 7 inch sets and this was an access panel you could remove it slide it out so you could do some work under here and this label is for the VT71 chassis TS4 that's the old stuff even as, even as channel 1 however the pan doesn't have any holes if this was really the pan from a VT-71, there would be holes in it because you would put an alignment tool in here because this thing only has eight channel positions. And that's what these correspond to. So we'd have one, two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They never had adjacent channels in any town. You never have channels uh, three and four or five and six in the same city. You could have... Uh, 
There's seven and eight. I know there's a jump in the frequency, I think between six and seven or seven and eight. Uh, but anyways, so at, well, my, my point is, this set would be set up for your town, and they would pick the channels that were present in your area, and put a tool on the bottom and tweak it for those channels. Can't do that with this, and the TS-18 doesn't allow for that. It's, it's different. It's got coils mounted in a different place, I believe. We'll see that when I pull it out. Uh, or I'm wrong. It's been a while since I've looked at them, but uh, for sure, if this was the bottom pan out of a VT-71, and as I said, none of the later TS-18 series sets, as far as I can remember, um, because like the Bakelite, Bakelite sets, the 7VT2, 7VT3, and the suitcase sets all had solid bottoms. You had to pull out the chassis to service it. So there'd be no need to make a pan for it. Hmm. Okay, in order to take one of these chassis out, you have to remove four washers and screws. Again, unusual. All the screws and washers were present. And you have to disconnect the CRT. That's the trickiest part. It's got 14 pins. Often these bases are loose or some of the pins loose. I've ripped pins out. I've had bases come loose, but be slow, be patient. In this case, I was successful and got it off. And then there's two wires you pull out of the speaker and that's it. CRT stays in the cabinet. The chassis slides out. Also, I have to refer to some photos. I don't remember the original VT-71 pan extending out rectangular area like that. But yeah, my memory is a little fuzzy. It's been a while. I'm also curious about this. There's a bit of shielding that goes over that. And I just remembered, although well, I don't see it, there should be a tube chart inside. It have the model on it. I think it'd be over there. If it fell off, maybe it's in the cabinet somewhere. I don't know. Well, I'll get this chassis out anyways. Before we look at the chassis, there's one other thing I want to look at that would potentially give me a big clue about this set, and that's take the front off. So there are caps, or there's a cap on either side. You take off, remove a screw, and that loosens up the bottom panel. And that comes off, and then the whole CRT bezel comes out. So if this is factory, it will be very, very well made. And that indeed looks to be pretty darn well made. For sure nobody with a coping saw made that. That is a perfect curve and it's got a slot. I really got to think this was done at the factory. There's a CRT bezel, which I think should be rotated because it's got a flat here and there. And I think those should be at the top and bottom. It's actually not in terrible shape. CRT had slipped back in its uh, mounting. That's why it was so... It flopped down so much. So that looks to be factory to me. A very, very skilled woodworker did it. And there, are, <clears throat> there is no evidence inside whatsoever of that there was ever a tube chart. There's no glue residue. There's nothing. Something else that's unique I've never seen before is this grill cloth. The VT-71s uh, had different grill cloth than that. Cannot tell if it's original or not, though. It's just kind of a generic piece of brown cloth. Now as for the chassis itself, this will probably be actually the least interesting thing about the set. Because they pretty much all look the same. Although, I've never seen a sheet of paper like that. Huh. Looks like maybe the only thing that's ever been done to it is that cap is not original. Yeah, they say Motorola on them. The rest, 
I've worked on enough of these to uh, recognize all these parts. Bumblebees might be replacements as well. Because usually they'd be wax caps. But a piece of paper is kind of interesting. So, as I was saying, the VT71, or, or more specifically the TS4 series chassis, the earlier version of this chassis, had tuning caps in it. Or, yeah, yeah, they were variable caps, I'm pretty sure. And uh, they had, um, for the local oscillator and the bandpass antenna filter, and you could stick an alignment tool through the bottom of the cabinet and adjust them. The later sets, the TS-18 was a refinement of the design. Well, by refinement, they made it cheaper. So out to go the tuning caps, and they just got a whole bunch of inductors. To adjust the channels, you just stretch or squeeze the coils. That's it. <laughs> and if they had to add this piece of paper so this thing wouldn't short out against the metal cover. Again, it really points to this being the real deal. And they probably had some wood cabinets left over from the uh, old models. They wanted to make it look new for the new model year, use up what they had in stock. Wanted to use the newer chassis and the older cabinet. Had to put a piece of paper here to protect the tuning switch. That's what I'm going with. As far as the top of the chassis goes, there's nothing to go by here. It, they all pretty much look like this. It's copper plated. Uh, some of the really early ones and the last ones were not copper plated. And some Motorola markings on the electrolytics. Not Motorola branded tubes, so it's not too surprising. They've probably been replaced over time. Although they look to be all RCAs. Interesting. And that's the ballast. Uh, very briefly, if you've never seen one of these sets before, no power transformer. The tubes are strung in series. Plug it into the wall, like Christmas trees, uh, lights, uh, the old school ones, all the filaments are in series. However, there are too many tubes to do in one string, so there's two strings. Uh, half the tubes go down one, half the tubes go down the other string, across the AC line. But there's only about 75, 80 volts worth of tube filaments if you add them all up together. So, big ballast on both filament strings, and then they threw in a couple other resistive elements in here for the power supply. So uh, basically this burns off a lot of excess heat. And uh, they tend to burn out. They're just uh, like nichrome wire wrapped around some sheets of mica. It's exposed to the uh, atmosphere. <sighs> so that's that. <laughs> Interesting, interesting for sure, at least to people that like obscure early TVs. I suppose we should see if the picture tube is any good. Now the only real test for one of these electrostatic picture tubes is in a working set. But some CRT testers can do an okay job of telling you, at least if the filament's good, it's got some emissions and there aren't any shorts. So the CR70 is one model that can, it actually is in the uh, setup chart. So got it in the scope position, and I think I got everything set up right. So let's get the filament up to 6.3. And well, <laughs> because of all the stuff in the way, hard to tell, oh yeah, it's glowing. Really hard to see down in there, but yeah, I think I got it on camera. Well, that's good. Let's see about everything else. No shorts. No shorts. We've got cutoff control. It's kind of erratic. There seems to be enough 
settled down. Oh, might have a loose connection somewhere. Or sometimes when these things haven't been on in a while, they can be a little goofy. Alright, we've got some emissions. So it's certainly not dead. And uh, still a little life test. Okay, now in some of these, some of these, you can actually, in dim lighting, see a little spot on the front if you turn the cut off. So let me give that a try. Yep, there we go. You see that down there? Yeah, right there. So, it's definitely can produce an image. Excellent. And to myself, who's a bit of a, uh, a devotee of the early Motorola models, not particularly by intention, I just... Uh, stumbled across a lot of them early in my collecting days, maybe because I don't live all that far from where these things were made back in the day. Not that I got this locally, this was actually in Kentucky. Um, but boy, uh, I believe at this point there's only one model I don't have. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, VT75 or something like that, the early portable set with a rectangular uh, hole. And if you go back through my old videos, you see I've got one that's the earliest known one, earliest known model, lowest serial number. Uh, and if you haven't watched that, uh, I'll try to remember to leave a link to it because it's interesting because it also has a number of unique design elements. Uh, it was very really early in the production run uh, and they, they made a lot of changes to these sets over the years, little tweaks here and there. And that one uh, actually has a walnut cabinet, the only one I've ever seen. The standard models were mahogany and blonde, as far as the wood ones go. They certainly do not come in painted red. <laughs> now, okay, there is an extremely remote possibility this is original, because as somebody pointed out, there was an RCA radio that had colorful Mexican motifs, and it was kind of bright red, it had a cactus, and uh, somebody in a sombrero and all that, so I'll give that... Me a huge maybe. I just realized something. There's something missing. Hole, hole, hole. The Motorola logo is missing. I have to look in the box and look at the original seller's thing, but I can tell there's no marks on here. And I think I just might have a spare. Boy, I hope I do. Huh, there appears to be a hole here too. That's weird. So there's a metal logo that has pegs on it. It's kind of cast aluminum and it would go into there. But this seems to have another hole here. Now oh, it could just be a ding. You can see just a chip of paint gone there. But that, that is curious. If I strip these off, I'll be able to tell. There's also a chip gone on top here, or a few chips, kind of see, that's definitely mahogany under there, but what's curious is it doesn't appear to have really much of a finish to it, I mean, could somebody have stripped this and then painted it with some heavy red paint? It seems like a lot of work, you'd think somebody would just paint it right over the lacquer. Well, I think that's about all I got to say about this right now. Uh, if you have any thoughts, if anybody's ever seen one of these before, has any clue what might be going on here, please leave a comment. That's all for now.